Is everybody okay uh, if I record? Um, I'll assume that yes. Uh, I'll make the presentation available for everybody in the training catalog uh, folder in share file and also the presentation from, from Unicorn. So that was love and Daniel, please, stage is yours. Thank you for the work. So uh, I'll share the screen. Yeah, share the screen first. Let yeah, me. you should see it. Okay. Yes, we are seeing. So on this webinar, uh, we will focus on Echo SP uh, installation and upgrade on Unix systems. Uh, firstly, uh, let me uh, uh, introduce myself. Uh, so my name is uh, Dranislav Stiska and I'm currently I'm working as Echo SP technical team leader. Uh, and since the year 2016, I'm working as the maintenance specialist on the EcoSP uh, and uh, other projects in the energetics like OPD and PCR. Uh, regarding the EcoSP, I have started on the ECP3 version and I'm in the team since the beginning of the ECP4 and the EDX toolbox. Uh, hello once more. Uh, my name is Daniel Inota, and since last year I'm analyst of EcoSP development. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. Uh, so firstly, uh, we will take a look on prerequisites and general information before we will start with installation and the upgrade of EcoSP components, like a description of minimum hardware requirements. We will check the uh, necessary network flows. Uh, we will take a look on the deployment types and so on. We will also introduce you uh, new features for the latest release of the ECP 8.4.9 and ETX Toolbox 1.10. Uh, then we'll follow a practical part uh, where my colleague will, upgrade, will first upgrade uh, ECP endpoint and ETX Toolbox. And then we will continue with the clean installation, configuration, and the re registration uh, process for ECP endpoint and EDX toolbox, including the Java 11 installation. So let's take a look on the prerequisites and the general information before we will start. Uh, so firstly, I would like to mention that all uh, provided information is also available in the documentation so please follow ECP and EDX upgrade and installation guide for detailed information, as well as release notes to get uh, detailed information about the scope of the release, about the new features and fixed issues. Uh, before uh, starting with the installation, you need to make sure that you have sufficient hardware for the expected traffic. Uh, these uh, hardware requirements uh, are uh, meant to be used on the clients where traffic of 1000 messages per hour is expected. So please know if you expect higher traffic, then it would be necessary to increase the uh, resources like the CPUs or RAM. Anyway, uh, there is no change uh, in compared to the previous EcoSP versions. So it means for, for ECP endpoint, it is still four cores at two gigahertz frequency uh, together with eight gigabytes uh, RAM memory and 40 gigabytes disk storage, disk storage. For EDX toolbox, Two cores are sufficient with the RAM memory for gigabytes and 20 gigabytes of disk storage. Uh, we recommend to use virtual machines uh, for your environment, which can be resized uh, when you find that more resources is necessary in the easy way. Uh, also, maybe I will mention uh, that uh, when we are talking about Unix uh, instances, uh, the supported uh, operating systems are Red Hat uh, 7 or 8 or CentOS 7 and 8. 
Now let's take a look on the network for flows configuration for the EcoSP client. On the ECP endpoint side, you need to allow two outgoing uh, uh, network flows. The first one is uh, on the port 5671 to the ECP broker, which is uh, uh, using the NQPS protocol. And the second one is port 8443 on the component directory where the HTTPS uh, communication is used. Uh, regarding the incoming connections of the ECP endpoints, there, there is only a connection on the internal ECP broker, so on itself, on the port 5672 uh, with the protocol NQP or NQPS. And to reach the ECP endpoint graphical user interface, uh, you need to allow communication on the port 8443. Uh, for the ETX toolbox, uh, uh, it is sufficient to allow communication eight for, on the port 8443 uh, to the graphical user interface, and then uh, communication on port 5672, uh, which is the it, again the internal broker of the ETX toolbox, and you need also to configure 5672 port. Uh, uh, to the ECB endpoint uh, because um, ActiveMQ uh, is used for the communication between ECB endpoint and the ETX toolbox. In case that you are using the external database, then of course you need also allow outgoing communication to your database server. Uh, I will mention this uh, uh, slide later. Uh, regarding the communication protocols, as I mentioned, uh, the NQPS is the messaging protocol uh, used for the communication with the ECP broker and with the internal broker. And uh, HTTPS is, is used for the REST API, for access to graphical user interface, and for the web services. Uh, now let's take a look at deployment types. Uh, there are two basic uh, deployment types for the ECOSP components. The first one is the standalone deployment, which means that everything is installed on the single uh, server, including the internal broker, uh, internal embedded database. This is the default configuration, and it is the simplest uh, installation option for your ECOSP client. Uh, if you need to ensure higher availability of your EcoSP client, then it is recommended to install external database, and then you can install one or more EcoSP components in the cluster. Uh, there's advantage that when one ECP or EDX components goes down, the system will continue uh, the function on the, on the second available node. Uh, you can also combine this uh, cluster uh, <coughs> cluster solution with the database cluster. It depends on your availability uh, requirements. Now let's take a look on the supported databases. Uh, so as I mentioned, the default uh, database is embedded, which is Apache Derby. This is managed by ECP and EDX application and does not require any additional setup. Uh, the alternative is to use external database, uh, which must be installed and configured before starting the applications. Uh, there are four supported databases and default ports uh, uh, are mentioned on, on the slide. So the first one is Oracle uh, 12C and 19C, which is listening on port uh, 1521. Uh, the next one is MS SQL Server uh, version 2016, which is running on port 1433. Uh, next option is to use MySQL version 5.7 or 8.0. Uh, this database is listening on port 3306. And the last supported database is PostgreSQL, uh, available in version 9.6 or 13 and listening on the port 5332. Uh, if you decide to use the external database, 
uh, it is needed to prepare the database in a prior to installation, which means the creation of the application schema and configuration of the user access. And this information is provided in the ECP installation guide in the chapter 13 external databases or in the EDX installation guide in the chapter 10 external database. Uh, it is recommended for the, for the production uh, uh, usage of the SP client. It is recommended to use the external database because uh, of easier maintenance and better reliability and performance. And now let's take a look how to obtain the EcoSP installers. So uh, when we are talking about clients, about ECP endpoint and EDX toolbox, these installers are available online on Ensoy portal, on ensoy.eu slash data slash ECP or slash data slash EDX. This is available for, for everyone without any registration. Uh, if you uh, want or need to uh, Install also central components, which means ECP component directory, ECP broker, and EDX service catalog. Then you need to contact Ensoy, uh, which will provide you uh, the installers on the Ensoy share file. The access is granted by Christoph Montalsi. Uh, before you will start with the installation, you also need to obtain the component codes for your ECP components. Uh, so you uh, need to prepare a unique component uh, AIC, AIC code, which means the energy identification coding. Uh, uh, there's a link on the uh, on the Enso web page where is more information about this. Uh, uh, AIC coding scheme, and uh, you can get a new uh, AIC decode by your local issuing uh, office or central issuing office for, for your country. Now let's, uh, let's see uh, the new features for the latest release of the ECB endpoint 4.9 and EDX toolbox uh, 1.10. Uh, so the biggest change is adding support for LDAB authentication. So uh, starting with this version, it is possible to use LDAB and the Active Directory server for authentication to SP components. There is also a new use case for both ECP endpoint and EDX toolbox uh, for uh, checking the background jobs. Uh, you can check a uh, uh, background job status, duration, and, and uh, uh, other information about, about uh, the jobs. And there is also exposed a new Prometheus metrics for monitoring these background jobs. Uh, there is also a new uh, explanation of the message statuses for both ECP endpoint and EDX toolboxes. This is available on the message page. And for easier filtering and recognition of ECP components, we have added organization name on the green. Uh, we also mitigated uh, Spring for shell vulnerabilities by the Spring libraries upgrade in this version. Uh, please see the release notes uh, if you need uh, more detailed information about the release and about the fixes issues. Uh, if we will have uh, time on the end of this uh, <coughs> webinar, uh, we can uh, uh, show you this, these changes on the graphical user interface. So this is all from the uh, theoretical part. Now, if you have any question, uh, you can ask me. I don't see any question in okay. the chat and no hints. And if there is no, no question yet, uh, my colleague Daniel will continue with the install uh, with, the, with the upgrade of SP components. Yeah. So let's move to the next part, second part of this webinar. 
we will start with upgrade of ECP endpoint and EDX toolbox, and right after that, uh, we will show you the installation, configuration, and registration of uh, ECP endpoint and EDX toolbox together with installation of Java 11 on Unix. So let's start with upgrade. First, first link, I will show you the graphical user interface to show you the current version. Then I will just stop those components, upgrade them, and start them again to show you the version again. We will finish, finish it with sending a message. That's the endpoint. Just log in. Yeah. And here you can see the version, port 82. And on ETX toolbox, you can see the version right here, 192. I will stop both components. Uh, this is described in documentation in chapter, chapter 5.2.2, which is right here somewhere. Yeah. Again, stop application, and I will use the system CTL command uh, to, to, do it, to do it. So, CTL stop ECP endpoint, and also EDX toolbox. I can check it that. Components are not running anymore. So now I can start with upgrade. Uh, there were no uh, mandatory changes in configuration, so we can we can uh, skip the part with uh, configuration update. Also, uh, we can skip the upgrade of Java because we are upgrading from a higher version. Yeah, and also the internal proper configuration uh, it's will remain the same. So I can just execute RPM U command to upgrade the application. Firstly, I will move the folder where uh, installers are located and then just RPM U ECP endpoint. Nine. You can see that the application and service uh, upgrade was successful, and I immediately started again. Also mentioned in uh, documentation. I right here. Yeah, start application. Yeah. Again, system CTL. There are no configuration changes from the previous version of the yeah. It's mentioned that here there are no monthly changes, so nothing to do. Here with the user interface. It will maybe take a few few seconds, minutes. Oh, okay, it's pretty fast. Uh, so yeah, here we're gonna see that the ECP was successfully uh, upgraded to version four point nine. I will do the same thing with EDX. So I already started. Uh, there were also no monetary changes, so we can just, just upgrade it. Uh, so mentioned in the same chapter, get the number. 
with the years, so the application is already stopped. Uh, upgrade of Java is not necessary. Uh, same same applies for internal broker configuration. So I can just upgrade the application. Same command as on ACP. Yeah, and immediately started. On the toolbox, there were also uh, no monetary changes, so I can skip this step and just start it again. System CTL command. I will check the edX blue box. In the meantime, we can, we can send a message, uh, for example, to this endpoint. Yeah. And you can see the, that uh, the message is successfully received. And on the toolbox, here you can see the version. So the upgrade was successful. And I will send a message. Again. And it's also successfully received. So the upgrade was successful. Well, that's, that's all for upgrade. It was pretty, pretty easy, pretty quick. So if you have any questions, okay, probably not. So let's move to the installation uh, firstly we will install java 11 and then install uh, both applications starting with ecp endpoint and then edx toolbox so for installation of java I will on documentation, uh, especially uh, chapter 5.1. And here in the Linux, there is there is a command yum install Java 11 OpenJDK for installation of the required Java. So I will do that. This connection. Going to this one. Show you that there is no Java install right now. I'll just yum install. Okay. Yeah, confirm it and wait for the installation. Yeah, so installation is complete. I can check the Java version, and here you can see that the Java 11 is successfully installed. Let's move the installation of uh, ECP endpoint with uh, encrypted passwords. Uh, after that, uh, I will just start it and register it under the component directory. 
and then as part of prerequisites of for uh, EDX toolbox, uh, I will change the runtime configuration and add new user to user.properties and group.properties. The uh, installation process is described in uh, documentation in chapter uh, 7.4.3. Uh, 7.4, sorry. Uh, yeah, here you can see the supported uh, operation system. And yeah. And here in, in this chapter, uh, there is the ECP application installation. So just simple command RPM I and the, the installer. Well, move to the folder with installers and run this this command. Yeah, so ECP endpoint has been successfully installed, and we can start it with system CDL start endpoint command. So just find this endpoint and then continue with registration. Let's start starting off ECP endpoint is mentioned in chapter 744. It's right here. So there are all system CTL uh, commands then that you can use. So start, stop or restart. And the registration process is described in chapter 8. Right, right here. So the process is pretty simple. Just access the graphical user interface of ECP endpoint, login, and insert a registration key store, which is provided by your component di directory administrator. Fill it in the password, and then fill some information about component directory and also about your endpoint. Then just send the registration request and wait for approval. So, endpoint started successfully. I will log in and register the endpoint. Here's the Here's the key store. And I forgot for the ingredient password. I, I think you can do it right now. I can do it right uh, now. I will just sorry for that. Uh, this can happen. Uh, forgot to, to uh, configure an encrypted password. So I will just stop the endpoint again and uh, move to the right folder, just etc, ECP endpoint. Uh, this process is also documented in uh, chapter 748. Yeah, right here, here custom passwords. Uh, so I will uh, execute configure password script, which is located in uh, slash etc slash ecp dash endpoint and then then configure uh, encrypted passwords i will uh, add some key and then define uh, some some passwords for uh, administrator user technical user and and so on so here is the uh, here is the 
the script. Let choose number two is encrypted password. Here also number two. Define some key. Confirm it. Uh, here uh, you can define the encryption algorithm, uh, but I will use the default one, which is uh, right right here. And I can just hit the enter, and it will be used. Now just fill all the passwords. You can see that I had to define a password for administrator, for authentication key store, internal broker, and also key stores in database. And right now I can I can I have to uh, reload daemon. because uh, the service has changed. And then just start the ECP endpoint again. Can you show the, some of the configuration yeah. files that the, the, the passwords are encrypted now? Here, for example, in users.properties, here you can see the encrypted password. Mm. Yeah, and this is good demonstration of that this encryption of the password can be used after after the installation of, of your ECB endpoint. So if you want to improve your security on the existing existing endpoint, you can just execute this uh, uh, script and uh, encrypt all all the passwords. So, yeah, exactly. I'll change the user interface again. Yeah, and I can now finish the registration. Yeah, I have to uh, define some information about component directory. So URL and code, in this case, zoom. Check connectivity, which is mandatory for registration process. They continue and now fill some information about uh, this endpoint. Firstly, uh, choose some some endpoint code. And for example, uh, you can uh, optionally fill a project name and an environment name. Those information will be. Uh, displayed right here in a header so then you can easily recognize which endpoint it is project name install an environment name unix and then mandatory fields uh, about company information unix name email address Also, phone number, which has to be in uh, this format, so starting with double O. And also, check this box that you have read uh, the GDPR disclaimer. So, best. And also, I will approve it on component directory. Now we should wait for uh, the initial synchronization. I'll just the documentation. So uh, this whole process is mentioned in chapter eight, the registration, and then in uh, chapter eight point four four three is uh, mentioned that the. Uh, Configuration, runtime configuration should be changed if you want to use EDX. So, right after the synchronization, I will change the runtime configuration and then, then configure a message path, which is uh, mentioned right here in this chapter. 
also with screenshots how to do that. Yeah, so the CPA endpoint is successfully synchronized. And really its configuration. And I will update the runtime configuration with enabled IMQB. Um, IMQB must be enabled to enable the communication between uh, uh, EDX and ECB, and also uh, IMQB API server handler must be uh, enabled to to properly communicate with each other. And also, we can uh, choose uh, which uh, message type will be will be sent to EDX. In this case, uh, asterisk for all message types. I'll just quickly again change this volume to units because uh, this configuration will rewrite uh, the project name and environment name that we uh, choose during registration. I will import the file. You can see the file has been successfully uploaded and ECP endpoint should reload its configuration. And maybe take a few seconds. Okay, in the meantime, I can configure the message type, my message path to be able to communicate within the network. Uh, I, uh, right now, uh, the ECP endpoint and ECP broker are not synchronized together. Uh, let's say that uh, ECP broker is uh, synchronized every fifth minute. So just have to wait before I send a message. So in the meantime, uh, I will I will install the EDX toolbox for the next next step installation uh, EDX toolbox. With the encrypted passwords, hopefully on the first time. <laughs> uh, then uh, I will change the port. It's necessary because ECP and EDX are running on the same server. And then change the configuration, uh, replace key store, and start uh, the EDX toolbox. So just remove folder with uh, installers with rpm i command uh, install the application this process is also uh, described here in edx installation guide uh, in chapter 6.4 yeah so installation on linux so project is these ACP endpoint, RPMI command, and some configuration, changing ports, and so on. The index toolbox is successfully uh, installed. I will move to etc slash index toolbox to uh, run the configure password script to encrypt all passwords same as it was on uh, ECP endpoint. So I'll just encrypt it here as well. Some key. Confirm. I'll use again this default uh, algorithm. And just fill 
passwords again. And I made that typo. So now passwords are encrypted. I can show it to you. That, for example, here in users the properties, the password encrypted. Also, I will add a, a two box user uh, to to ECP endpoint. Uh, user that properties and in this case because the passwords are the same i'll just reuse this encryption and en encrypted password and i have to also add it to groups that properties box copy it right here Endpoint should be synchronized, so it should be possible to send a message right now. Yeah, the message was automatically uh, automatically received, which means that the MQP is enabled. So. Change the configuration of EDX toolbox. Uh, this is uh, mentioned in chapter seven of EDX installation guide. Here, the EDX toolbox configuration, and here are all properties in, uh, from, from the file that should be changed. So I'll change all of the necessary well, uh, properties, which are the EDX toolbox code. In this case, will be Panda. And also the default service catalog code, which is Lion. And right here, I will change the alias from EDX model out to ECB model out. And also, so here, ECB model out. Because EDX toolbox running is running uh, on the same server as uh, ECB endpoint, I have to change the ports. Uh, typically, uh, the AMQB port for EDX toolbox is changed from uh, 5672 to 6672. And then I have to also change the rest of the ports. Uh, they are uh, configured in, in env.conf file, which is located, it's described in, in the documentation in this chapter, yeah, uh, which are located in uh, etc systemd system and EDX toolbox service. There is the envelope.conf file. I will quickly, quickly move there. System toolbox right here. And I will change all those ports. Again, typically uh, the ports are changed from here, for example, 8.005 to 9.005 and this applies for all other ports so just change the number 8 to number 9. It's a typical configuration. So let's check if done. Yeah, uh, also I have to replace the key store and uh, restart ECP endpoint 
to apply the, the change in user that properties. Restart Presley, the ECP endpoint, and copy the, the authentication key store from uh, ECP to EDX. Those components uh, must have the same certificate authority. Um, but uh, the easiest way to do that is just switch uh, those those uh, key source. Also, I have to change the permission uh, to to make edX toolbox as owner. Um, is the pod key store and to rename this one because in configuration file is defined as key store. JKS. Right now, just uh, again a real demon because uh, the, the service has changed, and then to start EDX toolbox. After any change into and uh, and file, you need to reload this this demon. Otherwise, it will not allow to start start the application. Yeah. Yes. This is also mentioned in in documentation. Uh, in uh, chapter seven, four, five is the starting of, of application. Maybe, uh, sorry, six four five. Yeah, something else to ping the edX toolbox. So same same command uh, as as on uh, ECP endpoint. Check the toolbox. Yeah, it started. Well, yeah, and you can see that the version one the 1.10 is successfully installed. Uh, also, uh, it was the toolbox did not receive the configuration. So maybe some problem here. It's received by by another endpoint. Maybe yeah. to address it again. I will check the, the service catalog. And if the toolbox is presented in configuration, uh, it should be. Check it also. So here, it's not necessary. And then configure. And uh, which is this one. And it is in, in the network configuration. Seems that uh, 
the endpoint for service catalog just don't send a I'll try to restart it because it's just okay. So in the meantime you can yeah, so you, you saw the document and just can just send a message. But firstly we have to uh, get the the coffee work network configuration from service catalog. Yeah, it seems that there are that there is some some connectivity issue with with this endpoint. Is the messages are in an accepted state? Yeah, I'll try to super start the service catalog as well. Yeah. Maybe also restart the XP broker. Is it possible? Mm -hmm. to, to help? In broker, it, it seems that all, all components are uh, have, a, have a consumer. All right, well, maybe just try to change uh, the network configuration. Do some small change, for example, uh, here, deleting the version from it. Mm -hmm. This one. So in 16, if I this still not. Oh, I see. I see where it's the issue. Uh, on the service catalog, there is an error message that ECP endpoint bundle uh, cannot be used because the broker is not uh, reachable on, on the network zoom part. Uh, 
And is it is it is is it uh, registered to the same network to the zoo park? Yeah. Check this part. Can you open the network configuration, please? Oh, for service catalog. Mm, yeah, sure. So the last one. Yeah. And show me. Okay, show me. This one. Down. Zoom park. Uh, okay, code is bundle, it's fine. Let's try it again. Uh, I just tried. Yeah, it's working now. Message. It's working now. Yeah. Uh, and it's propagated. Yeah, yeah. So That's great. Yeah, it took some time to propagate the information about it. So yeah, I know that to the service catalog, but it's fine. To well, no, no, it's fine. Uh, the toolbox is successfully synchronized with the service catalog and it received its network configuration. So now I can I can send a message to another toolbox. Uh, for example. Yeah. Message is successfully received. So the uh, installation was successful and yeah. maybe it is good to mention that uh, the part of the installation of the edX uh, toolbox is also registration to edX service catalog, which is uh, usually managed by the same administrator of uh, uh, ECP component directory. So this administrator grants you privileges to do uh, or approve the registration request on the on the ECP level and add your code to the ED service catalog as we can see uh, on the screen. Yeah, so yeah, we have it just just prepared. Yeah, so if your ECP endpoint is working properly, however, your toolbox is not able to get the configuration as we saw on, on this example, then probably uh, something is wrong in the network configuration. Maybe administrator needs to add your toolbox to the service, to the, uh, uh, service catalog. Yeah, so that is all for installation. We finally got it. So, uh, yeah, we, we send the message, receive the message. So the EDX and ECB networks are Maybe, working properly. Yeah, we have some some time. Uh, uh, if you can uh, demonstrate new features in the release yeah. on the so, box. The first one is uh, the explanation of message statuses. So on the graphical user interface on message page, uh, this info button is newly added and it opens a model window with explanation of uh, message statuses. And also if you hover your cursor uh, above this icon, the explanation is, is also displayed. This is the same on inbox and also outbox uh, tab and also on uh, EDX toolbox. The list is here just a little bit longer because there are more uh, message statuses. And also, so the hover and uh, on, on uh, incoming pull messages stuff. 
Another one was the organization display, displaying organization on more, more places because on older version, uh, it was only here and only on the local endpoint. Now it's shared to, it was actually shared uh, before to other endpoints, just, just it was not, not displayed. So now it is. It's right here, so you can see code and also the organization on uh, inbox and also outbox uh, tab and a new message. Uh, you have it uh, next to next to the code. You can actually uh, search just by the the organization. And the last one we mentioned on the remote user interface uh, is background jobs. So this new tile is what was added uh, in this version and it displays the, the number of jobs that are completed, waiting or run or failed. And also on settings page, there is this table with start and end time and also duration. In the case the job is failed, here is also the failure. Uh, the, the log is there mentioned. That was the, I think, major changes in, in Google user interface. So, um, if you have any questions, you may ask. Okay, so hello. Uh, hello. Hello. We are uh, new to the uh, ECP EDX. Uh, we're taking it over from colleagues. Uh, one question I have is: uh, Do all the endpoints have to be on the same version? Uh, no, they they can be on on different versions. To communicate with each with each other. Yeah, I think there there is guaranteed uh, guaranteed compatibility two versions back, which means yeah, two. right now we have version three point nine and back to the four point seven. It is guaranteed that the communication will work properly. Uh, it it is tested within within the release. However, uh, from our experience, uh, we we can uh, tell you that it is working even with the with the older version back, like of with the newest version, you should be able to communicate with the ECP endpoint on the version 4.4, I think. Yeah, so uh, actually, actually in last release, we added uh, compatibility metrics to ECP and EDX release node. So there is a tab with, with compatibility. Uh, and it's from ECP 4.4 to the latest, so 4.9 and EDX, I think 1.54, something like that. Yeah. I can find it, I'll show it to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. here it is. So yeah, from EDX 1.5 to 1.10. Yes, okay, okay, I can see it. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? I don't see any question in the chat and no hands raised. It, so I think no questions. Then I just want to thank you for your attention. Maybe uh, see you, hear you in some another webinar. Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you for your.